I have a wounded drawer. And this happens to be an all wood drawer, which belongs in an older home. So I'm just going to show you a couple of quick tips on fixing a wounded drawer. In this case, what often happens with drawers is somebody belligerently pulls it out over and over again, and the face ends up separating from the body of the drawer, which is what's happened here. You can see this little nail is valiantly trying to hold on, but it is, in fact, backing out quite against its own will. Now, I'm going to pull that nail out because I want to start fresh with nice, fresh nails that have never known the kind of violence that these other little nails have seen. This is really old wood, and it's, it's almost powdery, so it makes pulling out the nails really easy. OK. So this is going to fit like this. Talking out loud is always good when you're doing home repairs. It cements the idea that you have some kind of control over what's going on. Yeah, you see, how am I going to get this back together? OK, let's look. I'm taking a moment to collect myself because, you see, this side fits in a nice way. The joint, this little T-joint, slips right into that notch. Over here, the joint has been broken, so it's not going to be quite as simple. I'm going to start by putting some of this carpenter's glue on the joint that, that is loose now. And I'm going to smarm it around over a few other bits, too, so that I have a, a good, tight bond. So I'm going to open it like so. Actually, I got my world famous Q-tip supply here. I'm going to use that to put the glue on because it's a bit tricky. So I got a nice dollop of glue on the end of my Q-tip. And I'm going to put it all along the inside of this joint. Now, you know what? Glue is the real bonder here. I'm going to nail it, but really that's just to hold the joint in place while the glue sets up. Stay. So you know what? This is going to work great. So now, I want to use my own body weight against this. Actually, this is where a clamp would come in handy. I've got so many to choose from. None of those will work. I want a really big clamp. I'm going to have to go get a really big clamp. I'll be right back. You should never abandon a, a project in mid-glue. So I'm just going to, while I look for my clamp, I'm just going to keep this uh, clamped. OK. This is going great. OK. <laughs> OK, here's the thing. I don't have the right size clamp, OK? I just have this, this clamp, but it's not long enough. You see, it needs to be longer. Like, like this part needs to slide down, but it's just not long enough. OK, so I'm not threatened by this because I'm creative, and I'm going to get around it. So this is what I'm going to do. You know, you should just always check to see that you have the right clamps before you put the glue on. Now look, you know, I, I can put more glue on, but that's not the sport of it. The sport of it is to do it right. One swift, easy movement. Okay, I put the, the thing down. I'm going to improvise a clamp. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take these blocks. I'm going to brace this drawer against these blocks, like here, like here, like here. And then I'm going to be able to work on this drawer, and it's going to be held tight, and I'm going to be proud. OK, so now the final one I'm going to use. <laughs> I love repair. I mean, the thought of this going wrong doesn't even cross my mind. OK? The, t the thought of the table falling over as I nearly just made it happen. OK, and finally, OK, and that's wrong because it's not actually doing the job. And by now, the glue is totally dry. Who are we kidding? So I'm going to take a moment, collect myself, and re-glue this joint and get my clamp just right. OK. 
Okay, I've just gone. I'm still wetting down my glue here in the in the preoccupation that I have with keeping this joint moist and ready to go. Now, I've got every clamp I own here. I've got your spring clamps, so-called, because they have springs in them. And I got your C clamps, because they form the letter C. And, of course, your F clamps, because they look like an F. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is a great, this is going to be so rigged, you're going to be amazed. What we've, The first thing I have to do is fill in a few little spaces that, that exist here. So I've got the shims. These, this is a carpenter shim. They're available in like th batches for about 350. They're great. So this goes in here. And then I need another one up here, except I need the fat one here. And then what you can do, hammer, is just tap them into place. So they're being held in place by these blocks. So I've got two more of these blocks. I'm going to, at first I thought I would like drill them to the side of the thing, because what I want to do is use one of my F clamps to push the face of this drawer in. OK, C clamp. You've got to put something down. There are times in life you've just got to drop something. These are the carpenter's friend. <laughs> I couldn't fake it, could I? I couldn't fake it being quite this bad. <laughs> Some people would have given up by now. But not me. Because I know that when I get this, and I get this right, I'm going to feel so good. I'm not saying another word till I get this right, OK? Because it seems to be that the talking is affecting my, my success. I can talk now. It's working. Now they've they've coated the um, this little plate with plastic, which is good. But I'm going to go one step further because I don't want to damage the finish of the drawer. So I'm going to use a shim. Okay, so I'm holding it in place. I'm just going to back it out a little bit and put. Don't even think of it and put the shim in place. <clears throat> OK, so what's happening is this clamp is locking onto this block, and it's going to pull the face of the drawer in <laughs> with any luck at all. There, you hear that? Did you hear that creak of wood? That is a good sign. <laughs> OK. OK, now look, this joint is beautiful now. It's all tight. It looks really good. Now I'm going to use this intensely stabilized mass of clamps to help me drive two drill holes in to replace those screws that are the little nails that I took out in the first place. OK, let's see how that worked. All right, so I'm going to tap this finish nail into the hole. And then I'm going to use a nail set to set it, but first I want to set my second one. OK, now I just need to get my nail set so that I can set those nails. <coughs> They're also called nail punches. They've got a lot of different names. better. So 
the first tap when you're setting a nail deeper into the wood, the first tap is just to balance to see if you're balanced properly on the head of the nail. And then the second tap, which sounds louder, is the one that drives it. OK, so <clears throat> I'm going to walk away from this drawer now. It's as good as I'm going to get it. It's, um, it's both glued and nailed. So I'll, I'll let it um, sit so the glue can set. And um, this has given me a lot to think about. Not only my own, my own sense of inadequacy in certain situations, but also the beauty of, of forgiveness of myself when I've done something like this and, and, and yet still come out, come out ahead, I feel. <clears throat> well, with that pithy bit of philosophy, I'll leave you. I never throw out a piece of wood because I like to take my waste pieces, I plane them, and I end up with bowls and bowls of attractive potpourri. Now, all this heavy-duty carpentry might end up giving you a splinter or two, but don't reach for the tweezers or go to heat up a sewing needle. No, reach instead for the white glue. Just smear a little dab of white glue on the splinter and then wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, simply peel off the white glue and the splinter comes with it. It's so much easier than those primitive implements of torture that we normally use to remove splinters. Mind you, if you have an undergrounder splinter, you know, the kind that's really deep inside and all you can see is a just a, a deep buried object, well, I'm afraid you're just going to have to heat up that sewing needle because you're out of options. Well, until next time on A Repair to Remember, I'm Mag Ruffman. <laughs>